historical figure. Let me know in the comments below. England's most notorious killer may in fact have been poet Francis Thompson who left a lot of details about these murders in his literature. And shockingly this latest theory actually comes from an Australian school teacher who has been studying in the Jack the Ripper cases for 20 years. I'm kind of surprised it's an Australian guy cracking this case. I feel like it would be a British guy. Yeah it's not fair. Why are they taking our killers? Pouring over the work of Francis Thompson, Patterson found some detail of a love affair between the poet and a prostitute which lasted a year. Ended up in a downward spiral of opium use and apparently took out his frustrations by killing other prostitutes in the area, details of which he left in his work. And on top of this, the man also knew rare surgical procedures, some of which were found in the Jack the Ripper cases. On top of that, he was also known for carrying a knife underneath his jacket. What kind of a poet is he? A sick demented one. Ooh. And on top of that, Thomas claimed he owned a leather apron during a period of homelessness in 1888. Now although there's a lot of speculation around Jack the Ripper's identity, they know for a fact he wore a leather apron. But Patterson, he's done some pretty good research on this. The true identity of London's notorious Jack the Ripper, one step closer to being solved. English poet Francis Thompson's gruesome tales, just the beginning. Just a stream ran bloodily under the wall. Oh, stream, you cannot run too red under the wall. More than a hundred suspects have been put forward to date, but according to Patterson's research, Thompson had the means, motive, and method to pull off the blood curdling murders that took place in London's Whitechapel district more than a century ago. Just the basic facts that he had a knife, he had medical skill. You know, and the medical school was especially highly trained medical school on organ removal, the same skill that Jack the Ripper had. The details have been published in Patterson's new book, Jack the Ripper, the works of Francis Thompson. The book, which was more than two decades in the making, hit shelves in the UK this week and is due for release in Australia later this year. It's a murder in plain sight, this famous poet that may have actually killed a whole bunch of people. Leah White, NBN News. Now, on to a question that's held a, a morbid fascination mm. for, well, just over a century. Who was the notorious serial killer Jack the Ripper? Well, a new theory points the finger at a famous poet from Preston, Francis Thompson. The claims have been made by an Australian teacher who has spent years looking into the mystery. He claims that there are clues in the poet's writings. Peter Marshall takes up the story. What is it, sees he? Ha ha! There in the frightfulness, ho ho, there he saw a maiden, fairest fair. Swiftly he followed her, ha ha, eagerly he followed her, ho ho. The poem goes on and becomes darker and darker. The narrator declares the woman he's been stalking to be corrupt. He attacks and kills her with a knife. And all of that written by a man who at the time of the Ripper murders lived within walking distance of each one. Providence Row is a homeless shelter that was established and run by the Sisters of Charity, a Catholic organisation, a non-denominational society, which meant that any person of any religious persuasion was allowed to enter, but it was run by Catholic nuns. Ideally for Francis Thompson, who had studied as a priest, Providence Row would have been the best place for him to have stayed during his homeless years. By November 1888, which is when it opened during the winter months, Francis Thompson could have been uh, admitted to the row. And we know that Francis Thompson stayed at Providence Row because he told that he stayed in Providence Row in the 1891 January edition of Merry England where he wrote an article, Catholics in Darkest England. And in that article he talked about the difficulties of living on the streets and the sadness of being a vagrant and how, how difficult it was. And he talked about how he waited with great eagerness to enter the row. And so literally from the stairway of Providence Row on the night of the murder of Mary Kelly, Francis Thompson could have looked out the window down to the covered archway that would have led into Miller's Court. Out of the hundred or so suspects, I don't think you have a suspect that we can actually pinpoint to be so close to one of the murder sites. Even suspects who spent their lives living in the East End. We have ones that lived in neighbouring streets, such as Jacob Levy, but even he is further away from one of the murder locations. So Francis Thompson is the only suspect who we can show was closer to the murder than any other suspect. He also happened to have six years of highly skilled medical training in anatomy and dissection and a dissecting scalpel. And if you ask Francis Thompson, what are you doing at Providence Row, his answer would have been, quite honestly, I'm here seeking out a prostitute. I'm hunting down a prostitute who left me. Because that's what occurred. He'd had a relationship with a prostitute for a year. In June, when he first became published, she said she was going to leave him. He was devastated and he refused to leave the streets, even though he was being paid by Wilfred Meenal 
because he didn't want to lose it. He was literally on the streets of Spittersfield hunting down a prostitute who had left him at the very time that prostitutes had been murdered by someone that um, coroners and doctors and police officers suspected had medical and anatomical knowledge, which Thompson did have. But while he was working for the shoemaker, he wrote, that's where he wrote his, um, in 1886, his poem, The Nightmare of the Witch Babies. A lusty knight, ha ha, on a swart steed, ho ho, rode upon the land where the silence feels alone, rode upon the land, rode upon the strand of a dead man's groan, where evil goes to and fro, a rotten mist, ha ha, like a dead man's flesh, ho ho, was abhorrent in the air. What is it he sees, ha ha, there in the frightfulness, ho ho, there he saw a maiden, fairest fair. Swiftly he followed, ha ha, eagerly he followed, ho ho, lo, she corrupted, ho ho, and its paunch was rent like a brasten drum and the blubbered fat from its belly doth come. It was a stream ran bloodily under the wall. O oh stream, you cannot run too red under the wall. With a sickening ooze, hell made it so. Two witch babies, ho, 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 ho. which he talks about, um, well in the poem, you have a lusty knight that wanders through the streets of London, slaughtering unclean women and ripping their intestines out and, and joyously yelling, I'm laughing, ha ha. ha.